it's difficult to look into a crystal ball and know what's going to happen with cross-strait relations. So I'll, I'll speak with you know a big caveat of who knows. However, I think it's important that by the time the election occurred, it certainly would not come as a surprise to Beijing that Tsai Ing-wen was re-elected. The polls were all showing things were going that direction, even though there were some questions about whether the polls were accurate because Han Guoyu, her KMT opponent, had asked some of his supporters to actually either respond incorrectly or not at all. As far as what will happen across the strait, a likely scenario at this point is continuation of what's been occurring since Tsai came into office in 2016. We keep hearing about will Beijing further tighten the screws. What does that mean? Will Beijing try to make it so there's even less international space for Taiwan and international organizations? Will there be efforts to further strip diplomatic allies that officially recognize the Republic of China, Taiwan's still official name? Will there be efforts to otherwise block Taiwan economically being integrated further into the international economy? And the reality is, is those, those screws are already pretty tight. We're down to 15 formal diplomatic allies. There's a relatively limited or actually very limited group of international organizations in which Taiwan can participate, like APEC. So there's not a lot of space to further constrain. As far as other measures that might be more carrots rather than sticks, there could be more economic incentives for people from Taiwan to work and spend time in China. The question there, though, is does absence make the heart grow fonder? When people go and spend time in China, Will that increase affinities? Or if there is exposure to a very different political system, how will that create different reactions in Taiwan? And especially if Hong Kong continues to be a source of strain in the relationship, then you're going to see, I think, continuing uh, sense of skepticism and concern about close relations across the strait. Tsai Ing-wen faces a number of issues that are really more domestic issues and get less play on the international stage. Some of these are things like energy policy, how do you move away from nuclear energy without increasing air pollution, continuing issues involving uh, the demographic shifting to an older population. Uh, the pension system has been revised and the reforms have eased some of that burden, but it hasn't solved the problem. You're also going to see continuing questions about the domestic response to misinformation disinformation, fake news, whatever you want to call it, especially when that is seen as connected to China. There's already been an anti-infiltration bill, and we're likely to see a whole suite of legislation, for example, some sort of Foreign Agent Registration Act. On the social side, you'll also probably see continuing conversations around marriage equality. Taiwan has already legalized same-sex marriage, but a number of big issues were left open. So for example, may a same-sex couple adopt a child from outside of the relationship where neither parent is, neither of the people in that relationship is a biological parent of the child? And what about use of assisted reproductive technologies? And not only by same-sex couples, by, but also by single women. And these are all big questions that are out there and need to be grappled with, perhaps in the next four years, but, but certainly at some point in the future.